I'm Dr. Robert, and today on Five-ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, my subject is grief. We're um, I'm I'm recording this during the the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, and of course, grief is one of the emotions that everyone is feeling. Sometimes it's it's intense grief for a friend or family member who has become very sick or perhaps has, uh, has died from the virus. And sometimes it's grief from the tremendous dislocation of uh, everything that we were familiar with in our lives. Sometimes it's grief from the fact that now it's so difficult to meet with people that we may have been habituated to meet with before. Um, the word for grief, in Sanskrit is shoka, shoka. And it's an interesting word. Um, you may have heard the word ashoka, which means free of grief. They're the famous emperor who spread Buddhism uh, around the world, really, was named Ashoka, one of the great emperors of, uh, of India. And um, there is an Ashoka tree, which gives you no grief because it has excellent shade. Um, but the word shoka is very interesting. It comes from a root, shuch, which means to purify. It means to burn with regret. It means to burn with brightness. Um, it also means to rot and putrefy. So it, with the Sanskrit root, you can have many different meanings, but they all have to somehow connect together. And in the case of shuch, it seems to be this transformational potential that's there. So um, when you're grieving something, what has happened is part of you that you were identifying as part of you is no longer there, whatever that part of you may be. There is a void there now. And sometimes you were not ready for that to happen. And, and that it has brought up all kinds of undigested things that you now have to digest. Sometimes even if you had digested that well, you, uh, you, you now are feeling a great emptiness and, 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 and something that you are trying to fill and, and a great regret. Uh, that re word for regret in Sanskrit is paschattapo, which means the burning fire that comes afterwards. So shok is very much about transformation, but that transformation very uh, ugly, fire always transforms, and that transformation is extreme, can be extremely poignant, extremely intense, and it's good to acknowledge that reality and to remember that shoka is one of two emotions that actively create vata imbalance. The other one is baya. Baya means fear, shoka means grief, so baya uh, creates vata imbalance by making you move too fast. And shoka creates vata imbalance by creating an emptiness, or as we say in Ayurveda, datu kshaya janya vata prakopa. When a datu, and a datu is something that supports you, when that datu is kshina, when it's been reduced, when it's been eliminated, when it's not there anymore, then we don't know how to be stable. We don't know what, where, where we're not sure about our foundations, and we need to create some stability for ourselves. So when there is grief in yourself or other people, stability is what's necessary. In yourself, of course, an important way to avoid creating vata aggravation or to bring it back under control if you are vata aggravated is to breathe calmly, evenly, regularly and deeply. I'll keep a focus on your abdomen to make sure you're breathing deeply, connecting to the earth element, connecting to the water element, letting the water element, all of those emotions flow through you and not get stuck and putrefy. Um, and if it's someone that you know that is grieving, um, don't make, don't talk to them don't, uh, about, you know, oh, how much you feel and so don't, don't do anything other than sit with them, breathe with them, let them know that you are there. You're not trying to project anything on them. 
you're just being there, you're witnessing their misery, their reality, and their transformational experience. You're there with them, you're breathing with them, you're helping them move from a condition of being in a state of depletion and misery into a state of being reconnected and refocused on moving into the future. So this is Dr. Robert wishing everyone great and ongoing Ashoka. Namaste.